Just recently, we got support for creating single file C -sharp applications in .NET. This was announced with .NET 10 Preview 4, and in Preview 6, which just came out, we got some improvements to this feature, so I want to cover them as part of this video. If we take a look at the .NET 10 Preview 6 release notes, we can see what's new inside of file-based applications. And right off the bat, a notable highlight is support for publishing single file applications, and by default this is going to use native AOT. This means that published applications are going to be ahead of time compiled and they'll be able to run as standalone applications without requiring the .NET SDK to be available on the host system. This also reduces the memory footprint and it improves startup time. Now if for some reason we want to use libraries that are not native AOT compatible, we can set the publish AOT property to false and we're going to skip this feature entirely. There are also improvements to file directive syntax, I'm going to skip over this, nothing too exciting. Now what I found interesting is that we now have support for referencing existing projects inside of single file applications. This can be very useful if you've got some class library that you want to be able to reference and use to create some utilities with a single file application. So that's what I'm going to demo in this video. You just have to use the project directive and specify the path to the project file. Of course just demoing a project reference isn't too interesting, so I'm going to also build out an interesting application and it's going to be a password generator that also validates if the password has been pawned already and notifies us about it. I'm going to start from a completely empty folder and let's begin by creating a new C -sharp file. I'm going to call it generate password CS and just to validate that this is working let's do a console write line and let's print out a hello world. So to validate that I can run this I'm going to open up a new terminal and I'm going to type in .NET run and specify the name of my file. So .NET run generate password CS and this project should now be built and you'll see the output printed to the console. The next time I run this it should run significantly faster because we don't have to build the application again. So that's the high level intro into single file application. You just create a C -sharp file, write your code inside of it and then you can run it using the .NET CLI. Now let's make this more interesting. I'm going to create a new class library by saying .NET new class lib and let's call this the password generator. This is where I want my actual logic to live. So this is going to scaffold a C -sharp project that I can now reference from my single file applications. But to actually make this interesting, I'm going to create a class inside called generator. Let me also rename the file. And you're going to see Copilot generate stuff as I keep typing, but in the effort of saving us some time, I'm going to type in just some boring stuff. So inside of our generator, I'm going to create a new random instance that I'll be using in the password generation method. Our dictionary is going to consist of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters that we want to support inside of our passwords. And then let me drop in the generate method. Here's what's going to happen inside. We have three parameters, the length of the password that we want to generate, by default is going to be 16 characters, and then we have flags if we want to include numbers and if we want to include special characters. Both are going to be true by default. Then I'm just going to initialize a list that contains our letters, we're going to also append the numbers and the special characters, and finally we're going to create a new string of the specified length, and for each element we're going to randomly select some value from our characters array. So then how do we reference this inside of our single file application? Well if you recall, the directive was project and then we have to specify the path to our password generator. So I can just specify the folder and this should be sufficient. So let's go ahead and follow the copilot suggestion this time, importing the using statement, creating a new generator and then printing out the password into the console. Now I will just add this as a variable, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll save our password and copy generator generate. So now if I am to run this again, .NET run generate password CS, we should see the compilation also target our password generator DLL as you can see here. So our one project and the single file application are both built using this command and we get our password in the console. So far so good. Now the other syntax is also specifying the fully qualified path to the project file. This is another way you can do it and it doesn't really change anything inside of the output. Let me clear this and let's do .NET run again and you're going to see that this is going to compile and run. If I run it again it's going to reuse the cache build and we just get the output into the console. So now let's talk about actually adding something useful into single file applications. Let's say I want to validate if this password has been pawned. There's a free API that you can use to check for pawned passwords that are known to have been exposed in data breaches. The API is fairly simple to use. You just send a GET request 
to this endpoint and you specify the first five characters of the SHA-1 hash of your password, you're going to get back a list of key value pairs that contain the password hash and the number of times that it has been leaked in data breaches. So we can use this information to determine if our password is safe to use or maybe we should consider using a different one in case it's being pawned. Now let's go ahead and just test out this API. I'm going to curl to this endpoint and I'm just going to specify 12345 as the first five characters of our hash and you can see we get a response from the API that contains the password hashes and the number of times that they've been leaked. You can see there's a password here with more than 2000 leaks. This is probably some common phrase that people often use for a password and this is the type of passwords we want to avoid. So let me update how we are writing the password to the console. We're going to also add some context and then let's create the SHA-1 hash for our password. I'm not going to include a using statement. I want to see if this is going to cause a build failure. For now, let's do using var sha1, and you can create this by referencing the sha1 class and calling create. Then we can compute the hash for our password by saying sha1 compute hash, and we can use encoding UTF-8 get bytes to extract the bytes from our password. Now this is going to give us a byte array representing the hash for our password. And if I want to print this to the console, let's say console write line, and I'm going to say bit converter to string, and let's specify just the password hash. Now if I go ahead and try to run this, you're going to see that it's going to fail because we can't really reference this library. So we do need to import a using statement. So let's say using system security cryptography. So let me save this and rerun our file. And then I run into the next exception because I can't access the encoding class. So for this, we have to say using system text. So now I should finally be able to run this and we get the SHA-1 hash of our password in the console. Now in this format, it's not particularly user-friendly and it also doesn't match what we have to send to the haven't been pwned API. So let's go ahead and call replace and I'm going to replace the dashes with empty strings. So now if I rerun this, we get a nice little hash that exactly matches what we get back from the have I been pwned API. So let's go ahead and close the terminal for now. I'm going to extract this into a variable and let's call this the password hash. And then let's write the password hash to the console just so that we have some context as we go about our application. Then the next step we want to do is validate the password hash against the have I been pwned API. So for this, we need to send an HTTP request. So I'm going to instantiate a new HTTP client, and then we need to get the first five characters from our password hash. So I'm just going to call the substring method, and then I have to say await client get async, and I need to construct the URI using the base address for the API endpoint, which is API passwords.com slash range. And then we specify the first five characters of our password hash. I'm going to store this in a response. And remember that this is an HTTP response. So if this is a successful status code, we want to validate if our password is inside of the pawn password. Otherwise, we are just going to write to the console that we failed to check the password against this API. So then let me go ahead and grab the response body from the API response, and I'm just going to write it to the console. So let's go ahead and run this quickly to validate if our new code is working. And you can see that we are getting the response from the API in the terminal. So now we just need to convert this format into something that we can easily use inside of our .NET applications. And this basically is a key value pair. So a data structure that we can use is a dictionary. So how do we turn our response in this format into a dictionary? Well, we have to write a bit of code to make this work, but basically we can access the response body and then we can call split. And this is going to split the response based on the character that we specify. And let's say I want to split on the new line delimiter, which means that we are basically going to get each row as an element in this enumerable. So then I need to say select and now I have each line that I want to split based on the colon. So now we basically have a collection that contains multiple elements inside. Now these aren't objects yet, but each element contains the hash and then the number of occurrences for a specific hash. So you can think of it as something like this. Now, as I said, this isn't really an object. It's actually an array of strings, but now we want to turn it into an object. So I can just say select. I can access the parts and I like this completion 
is giving me an anonymous object where the first value is a hash. This is what we want. And then we have the second property as account that we want to parse. Now I do also want to call to dictionary and I want to use the hash as the key and the count as the value. So now we basically have a dictionary and the key is a string while the value is an integer. So let's call this the password hashes. So now the only thing that remains is to use our dictionary to try to find the password hash in there and see how many times it's been pawned. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let me clear the output and let's do dot and run generate password. And you can see that this password has not been pawned. And in fact, if I keep running the program a couple of times, you're going to see this be the case multiple times because you're generating a very random password each time and the likelihood of a password like this being pawned is very low. So there you go. There's a very simple utility that you can implement as a single file c -sharp application and you can publish this on your system and run it in your CLI whenever you need a random and strong password that you can use for authentication. It has the added benefit that we are validating it against the Have I Been Pwned API, which only improves the security of said password. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash the like button that's going to be right below. And if you want to learn more about single file applications in .NET 10, go ahead and watch this video next. Check out my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills. And until next time, stay awesome.